Hey guys, so I'm gonna walk through the process of flashing over from pump gas to E85 as I am now at the point in which I need to switch fuels. I was back on 91 octane for a few days doing some different testing and now I wanna head back to the good juice. So uh, I've run my tank down to, in this case, zero miles. However, you can get down to about 20 miles of range left. And I'm here at my local Propel ethanol station. I can see based off my ethanol content analyzer, which is bolted right before the fuel rail, that my current E content was E30. So I probably had about a gallon of ethanol left in the tank when I uh, swapped back to 91 octane. Uh, which means that there's still a little leftover ethanol. So this will be more important later once I put in the ethanol. For those unfamiliar with ethanol content sensors, it is a sensor that's put in the low pressure fuel rail side right before the high pressure fuel pump that reads the ethanol content as close to the injector set as physically possible. This is important to have it as close as possible so that you know truly what the ethanol content is at your set of injectors as there is a lot of line between here and there and it takes a surprisingly long amount of time for all the fuel to come through and see your ethanol content rise at the rail or drop if you're flashing back. So from here, once I'm ready to roll, go ahead and just fill up the tank fully with E85. Currently, I'm still on the 91 octane file for both ECU and TCU as my ethanol content is lower than the minimum E60. So what we'll be doing here once I have the tank full of E85 is monitor the ethanol content sensor to see how long it takes for the fuel rail to start picking up more ethanol content. You can do this by driving around lightly or you can idle and, and rev now and again to get the fuel through the system you're usually able to drive for about five or 10 minutes before you really start to see the fuel system clear all of the previous fuel out into the fuel lines. Obviously that's depending on what speed you're driving and the amount of throttle that you're using at that time. It is recommended to be as gentle as possible. In this case, since I already have E30 in the tank, it will likely take a significantly less time for the full E85 amount to go through the system. This pump usually tests at around E80, but with a little bit of dilution here from 91 and E30 mixture that's already in the car, I'll likely see something in the range of E75 to E78. That is okay as it's within the E60 to E85 safety range. Now that I'm fully filled with E85, I'll go ahead and start the car up still on the 91 file and go ahead and park in a parking spot and we'll go ahead and start the flash. see here we'll go ahead and refresh the ethanol content sensor I'm still at e81 at the sensors reading point so that ethanol i've just put in has not made it to the sensor just yet as a bit of an exercise here i'll go ahead and idle the car and we'll just see how long it takes for this ethanol content to start to rise a bit once the ethanol starts to rise at a considerable rate i'll know that we're getting pretty close to the ethanol that's in the tank to start to run in and right around e40 or e50 as i'm idling i'll go ahead and shut it down and we'll flash the e85 file it's not unlikely that the ethanol rate will increase significantly once it starts to move fast as you can see it's flickering around e31 to e32 if i rev stays in and around E31, E32. So we'll go ahead and just leave the clock running and you can see how long it takes for the car to start to run through just idling uh, in the 91 octane file. Again, this could be done driving around as well. If you're monitoring the sensor, you can see when the ethanol content starts to rise at the rail and make changes accordingly. At this station here, 91 octane is 529 a gallon whereas E85 was 3.39 a gallon. So definitely happy to be heading back onto the good fuel. Now as an exercise here, I will just rev it now and again to get things moving through because I know what the exact content of ethanol is. Uh, 91 octane can be run on E30 without much issue. It effectively just fills out any timing correction of 91 octane. <laughs> So 
we've been doing this for about four minutes now, and as you can see, the ethanol content has not risen uh, by any appreciable amount. <laughs> Now we're starting to see the ethanol content pipe up just a bit. So that's five minutes in, or just about. We saw it finally move from E31, E32 to 33 and 34. So once we start to see this continue to rise at a more rapid pace, which we should start to see soon, then we'll go ahead and shut it down and flash over to the correct file. As you can see, as I'm revving, I'm clearing in new fuel and it's starting to come through a bit faster. Now that I'm in on around E40, I'm gonna go ahead and stop revving and I'll let it idle. The factory closed loop fuel adjustments will be able to cope for this level of ethanol content. However, since it's not an ethanol file, I don't wanna be putting load under the car as much as I can. Um, at those lower E contents, it's safer. Um, most 91 octane has E10 to E15 within it already. So lower ethanol contents within pump fuel is not too bad. So we'll go ahead and just keep an eye on the content and see how it climbs as we're idling. So now we've reached E50 in ethanol content. So it's starting to come up nicely. One thing that I can do to speed this up a little bit without putting more load on the car is to raise the idle by putting the car in dynamic mode. It'll use a little bit more fuel. Uh, however, since this isn't under any amount of appreciable load, the 91 tune can still adjust to utilize this ethanol. If I wanted to drive the car around on this file, I would likely have misfires and codes for it being lean because this is too much ethanol content for a 91 octane file. But in the interest of speeding things up a little bit, we'll just raise the RPM a couple hundred by putting it in dynamic mode. As you can see, it's starting to move along a little bit faster. Once we hit our golden E60, we'll go ahead and shut the car off and flash over to the E85 file, which accommodates both E60 through E85. It's important to note that E60 through 85 has just about the same performance with this file. Whether or not you have E62 or E82 or anywhere in between, you'll be able to perform about the same uh, across the board. For example, our world record done was done on E66. Uh, our ethanol around here is right around E80. Uh, it just depends on the pump within your area. The maximum knock correction safety uh, that you can really find is at E60. So you don't uh, have the ability to turn up timing much more beyond E60 and see any amount of power gain. So we're getting close to E60. Great, so now that we're at E60, we'll go ahead and shut the car off and begin flashing the E85 file. It's important to note that this process of waiting for the ethanol content to rise to the minimum amount is the same amount of time, regardless of if you're flashing via a laptop program or if you're doing some map select type system that would be integrated into the MMI. Uh, you can't really avoid the time that it takes for these fuels to switch over unless you're running a fully flex fuel type tune, which is something that we have in development at this point in time. However, in the meantime, this is the process that's involved. So I've got my 034 flash cable plugged in, maybe, and I'm hooked up to my little laptop as well as a Wi-Fi hotspot to my phone here. This has been proven to be stable uh, in our area. I don't have too much concerns with that hotspot. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and go through the flashing process. Many of you are fami already familiar with this, however, just in case, we'll walk through it anyways. Um, something to note is that in this case, I'm not using a battery charger as it is a fuel switchover, not a full flash. When you're switching octanes, it is best practice to use a battery charger or battery maintainer during the flash. However, at this point, uh, when you're doing a fuel octane switch, it is such a fast flash that you can usually get away without issue. However, as a preventative, I've turned off my, uh, my climate control, I've turned off the headlights, and am running as little things inside the car to maintain voltage. So we'll go ahead and go through and select to ID the ECU first. Since I am changing octanes and I have the stage two TCU tune purchased and installed, I also need to switch the transmission file to the appropriate E85 shift map file. So first we'll go ahead and wait for the ECU to identify. So now that it knows my box code, we're gonna go ahead and click next. And I'm gonna flash stage two. This car is a stage two equipped vehicle and I'll be flashing E85 R2.0. By the time this video is released, E85 R2.1 will likely be available to the public. But for the purposes of this video, we'll go ahead and just walk through this. So current calibration is 91 R2.0 and I'm switching to E85 R2.0. The R2.0 is revision number. There will be R2.1 shortly that addresses some minor bug updates and, and patches for folks to make sure things run as smoothly as they can. So now that I'm clicking next, confirming some of my info here, and that I will be going from 91 to E85. I'm plugged in nice and safely. I've got E85 in the tank. It's E60 at the rail. Car's on. We're going to go ahead and click flash it. The bar is first going to run through doing a, a check to make sure it can talk to the ECU with no problems, that it has stable internet connection, that it can download the packets necessary to start the flash. So it'll go through 100% and then it will begin the flash again. It's done the check, everything's good to go. We'll start to see some fault codes pop up. That's normal and okay. Those will clear at the end of the flash. Great. So now I'll go ahead and follow the instructions and power off the ignition, hit enter, and we'll see my flash is successful. So all in all, that was about two and a half minutes, maybe three minutes uh, for flashing process. Um, and now I'll go ahead and roll into the transmission tune. You don't need to turn the car back on again. Well, you do need to keep it back on again to reconnect. So I'll do that, but you don't need to fire the car up between flashes. All you need to do is click new flash and we'll move on over to the transmission side of things. Hit the ID, transmission code. Trans flashes in general are faster as well because it's a smaller packet that needs to be flashed. Since I've already shown you the whole process for the first one, might as well walk through the second one as well. next and in the same way as last time my transmission tune is for 91 octane now i'm going to go ahead and select stage 2 e85 this is important if you've purchased the uh, stage 2 files as that does change the uh, flashing uh, and shifting portions of it so we'll go ahead and click next there click through the same process confirm i'm going to e85 from 91 to 93 and flash it similar to the last time there will be some codes that pop up it's going to check to make sure it's good to flash and then it'll make some noise from there
once it reaches 100%, what it's doing is doing vinyl checks to make sure that everything is taken as it should and that there are no problems with the flash itself. Great, so similar to last time, we'll go ahead and power the ignition off, hit enter, and we have successfully flashed. All in all, it's about nine minutes across both getting the laptop out, getting both plugged in and both flashed out here with a hotspot as well. So since my ethanol content is, we'll confirm at E59, E60, we'll start the car up and we are safe to drive the car as hard and fun as we want as we are now on the right ethanol content. Even now you can see how quickly it's rising above. Fuel temperatures rose as the, it's reading the fuel that was stuck in the engine bay versus new fuel that's circulating through the fuel lines. So you'll likely see that drop as time goes on. And then as time goes on, we'll see this ethanol content rise to whatever the true content is in the tank. I am guessing it's going to be around E70, E75 as well. Thank you guys for watching. Hope that uh, made all sense and wasn't too confusing for you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email tuning at 034motorsport.com. Thanks guys.